HET 194, Nate Preparation, Week 13 and 14, Electrical Diagrams. The objective of this week's assignment to help the HVAC refrigeration learner to understand the importance of recognizing the difference between pictorial and schematic diagrams, understand the reason for the two types of different diagrams, develop the ability to read and interpret HVC diagrams, develop the skills of troubleshooting HVC systems by using a schematic diagram, develop the skill of wiring a HVC refrigeration system by using a pictorial diagram, recognize the difference in HVC symbols, understand the reason for and why symbols are used in electrical systems and circuits, develop the ability to read and interpret HVC symbols in, um, for electrical systems, and develop the skills of troubleshooting HVC systems by using a schematic diagram with symbols, and develop the skills of drawing a HVC refrigeration uh, electrical diagram with symbols. In this introduction, an HVC technician must develop the skills of interpreting electrical diagrams to service and install uh, HVC refrigeration equipment. Without this skill, the technician will not be competent and truly understand how the equipment operates and how to repair a problem. The majority of the technical problems a technician will come across daily will be electrical issues. Therefore, gaining the skills of reading and interpreting electrical uh, issues is very important to progress into a journeyman technician. Knowing how the sequence of operation for a piece of HVC equipment can be determined from the electrical diagrams. Without a diagram, the technician would guess at problems and end up replacing incorrect components. Furthermore, schematics drawings are used by technicians to troubleshoot electrical systems because it uses a logical representation uh, to show how an electrical system operates and a pictorial diagram is used to show how an electrical system is physically wired. Because of the need to understand electrical systems quickly and accurately, it is necessary to use symbols to give clarity to uh, electrical diagrams. Symbols are used to give a representation of the components used in HVC refrigeration equipment. Therefore, without some type of symbol, it would be difficult to draw electrical diagrams without making pictures of the components used. This would take up too much space on an electrical diagram, and the technician would uh, spend time going through pages of diagrams. So this week, uh, vocabulary will include pictorial drawings, schematic drawings, line diagram, motors, line voltage, control voltage, contact point, safety controls, limit controls, contactor, relay, fuse, motor, motors controls, normally open, normally close, pressure switch, solenoid, thermal overload, thermostat, and transformer. So the question is, what is a pictorial diagram or drawing? A pictorial drawing uses symbols and lines to give a representation of the HVAC refrigeration equipment and allow the technician to understand how the electrical system is wired and connected. This is the best use of a pictorial uh, diagram because it physically will show you exactly how every wire is connected to the system and it will allow the installer or the technician to be able to understand how wire for wire and piece by piece how it is uh, centered within the unit and how it's connected to the unit so it's great for that purpose. In this drawing here you can see there is pictures and drawings of uh, components and you can see even the thickness of the wire or the shading of the wires is showing you how it is physically connected. So it make it easy. If you've got one part to replace, you could just look at it directly and you could tell that um, how it is connected, how many wires is going to that uh, component and so forth. But if it was a different type of drawing such as a um, uh, schematic it would be completely different.
So pictorials are good for replacing components electrically. So what is the purpose of a pictorial drawing? Pictorial drawings ease the installation of wiring of HVC equipment and it allows the service technician to make replacement of components because pictorial diagram shows the location and how wires are connected it leaves out any guesswork for the technician however pictorial is very difficult to use for troubleshooting and should never be used for that purpose pictorial drawings are easy to read for physical connection of wiring but it is troublesome to read for tracing the operation of the system in this case schematics are used for troubleshooting. So what is a schematic drawing? Electrical schematic drawing uses symbols and lines to give a representation of HVC and refrigeration equipment and allows the technician to understand how the electrical system is controlled and how it is operated. Electrical diagram is also known as electrical diagram or circuit diagram and basically if you look at it it's just a very elementary way or I could even put it this way it is very logical it's a very logical way to understand uh, how electric flows through a circuit and because of this uh, schematic type diagram sometimes called ladder diagram because the branch lines are usually stacked on top of each other like the rungs on a ladder and so it makes it very easy to find out what's controlling the loads in each branch line so for troubleshooting this is the best tool to understand how a system is operating and electrically uh, uh, sequence if you look at this um, pictorial and schematic drawings. These are two drawings you see. One is a pictorial with the, the top drawing and you can see exactly the wires how it's connected and got pictures so it's easy to understand. But the bottom one is actually a schematic of exactly the same thing and this uh, schematic you can see how the electricity is flowing. It's a simplified way to understand how the current is flowing through a circuit. So if you understand how the current is flowing through the circuit, you understand how the circuit operates. This is a basic air conditioning drawing. You can see some of the components that's located in it. And if we follow through, we could point out some of the components that's in it. We could see the evaporator fan motor, we can see the condenser fan motor. We can see the compressor. We see a capacitor. We see a potential relay. Other components such as the thermostat. It's a 24 volt thermostat. And we see a low pressure control, a high pressure control, and a contactor coil. The contacts for this contactor is located down here. There's a two-pole contactor and you see that the other set of contacts in L1 and L2. And those contacts are controlling just the condenser fan motor and the compressor. This is a basic heating uh, drawing and some of the components we could look at. Starting at the top, we see the fan motor. We see the capacitor. We see the contacts for the fan relay. We see a heater. It's an electric heater. We see the contacts controlling the heater, the main contacts. There's a tr transformer stepping it down to 24 volts a thermostat and this is a heating sequencer coil this heater 
sequencer coil is controlling the main contacts and the high voltage, which is 240 volts, for the electric heater. And below that is the fan relay, which is also 24 volts. This is a basic refrigeration drawing. Uh, this is for a freezer. And we can see some of the components like the time clock, the time clock motor, the time clock contacts, the defrost termination solenoid, a defrost heater, defrost limit switch, a defrost termination thermostat, the compressor, the capacitors, compressor overload, and a potential relay. Using drawings to troubleshoot systems is used daily by uh, technicians to speed up the process of understanding how the system works to determine what the problem is. So using both pictorial and schematic drawings to troubleshoot HVAC systems is important to understand the differences in both. Depending on the purpose of the job, the technician will use the correct drawing. For servicing HVAC and refrigeration equipment, schematics will help the technician to trace the problem faster and easier than a pictorial. However, a pictorial gives ease in understanding how electrical components are connected and located. Electrical diagrams are used, like I said, for uh, many purposes. And you look at this diagram and you can see the technicians using a meter to be able to diagnose um, the current flow to understanding how the system is actually put together. So that's a pictorial diagram above it to look at how to interpret the information from the system. But to actually to troubleshoot a schematic is the best diagram uh, possible. These are some of the symbols you may find in a refrigeration system, air conditioning system, and things you find in HVAC. I'll go through a few of these. If we look at the very first one, which is 200, which is a capacitor. 201 is a variable capacitor. 203 is a ground. 204 is a chassis ground. 205 is a capacitor with a polarity. 206 is a two cell battery. 207 is a normally open switch. 208 is a normally closed switch. 209 is a double pull, a single throw double pull switch. 210 is a limit type switch which is open and 211 is a limit switch is in a closed position and will open on time decrease. Let's jump down to um, 233. It's a float switch which will close on rise of level. 234 is a float switch which will open on a rise of level. 235 is a pressure control, normally open and will close on increase of pressure. 236 is a pressure control, normally closed and it will open on pressure. A couple more. 237 is a thermostat, which is open and will close on increase in temperature. 238 is a thermostat, which will open on increase in temperature. All these are different type of um, symbols you will find, common symbols that we use, such as transformers and things like that, that we can use or fuses. But it makes it very easy to be able to diagnose and troubleshoot and be able to read schematics just like a musician will use notes on a page to read music. These are, again, different types of loads you might find. A load is anything that will consume power or consume electricity. So if you consume it, 
not going through switches or conductors where it passes uh, current loads will always consume so they do make symbols of loads such as 248 which is a alternating or AC motor 249 is a resistor or a heater so these are different types of things so you may find it which is load and if you drop all the way down to um, 283 which is a transformer 284 is a transformer also so these are different type of transformers you may find which are loads with transform voltage other type of loads we talk about motors motors are definitely loads because they consume the different load it is motors are what you call inductive loads because they have windings and they use a magnetic field to uh, to generate work uh, it's a different type of load it will pull very high amperage during startup and then it will go up to normal after it get going so motor use electricity energy to perform mechanical work the symbol used for motors is a simple circle with a letter using to uh, explain what type of motor it is or been used such as a condenser fan motor or an indoor blower motor or evaporator motor these are all different type of motors but to explain what they are they would just give you the letter to let the technician know uh, understand exactly what it's used for solenoid coils is loads and it's very simply it's just a uh, symbol of a coil and it's used to like I said solenoids many type of solenoids like hot gas solenoids um, liquid line solenoid uh, hot gas solenoids or gas valves of solenoid anything that has a coil that generated a magnetic field to pull a plunger up is considered a solenoid so anything that uh, takes electrical power and does mechanical work is considered a solenoid Here's a diagram of a solenoid. Physical, you see the coil and you see the magnetic field around the coil. And there will be an iron core or something in the center of it or a plunger to be able to absorb the energy from the coil. So, light is a type of load, it consumes energy and a light bulb will produce both light and heat so the energy has been consumed is generating heat and also generating light in the uh, symbol chart above you see a red light in the top left hand corner and basically if you're going to use different type lights or other colors they would just put the first letter of the color such as G for green, Y for yellow, or of course R for red. A transformer is a load. Like I said before, a transformer is a device that consumes electricity. But transformer is a little bit different because a transformer takes power in. It doesn't lose very much power, but it actually uh, transforms through inductance power from the primary coil to the secondary coil to come up with a different voltage control voltage in HVAC for like for residential use is 24 volts and so it would take probably 120 volts and step it down to only 24 volts but we do find step up transformers sometime too such as in oil furnaces oil furnaces we use a step up transformer for the ignition coil it would take the 120 volts in and it would step it up to 10,000 volts a heater or electric heaters are types of loads that generate heat uh, we use it for many different applications uh, the heat up product a toaster is basically a heater you take uh, power in it has a resistive type coil and because of the resistance it will generate heat through it and we find other type of heaters too such as duct heaters to find in commercial buildings that is mounted into the ductwork to uh, heat up 
uh, the air which is passing through it. Electric furnaces is another type of uh, electric heater that consumes electricity, space heaters or electric ovens. One thing about electric heaters is that it is 100% efficient because all the energy is put into it has been used for to generate heat. So this is a symbol for a heater. Basically it's the squiggly line like the zigzags going back and forth to um, show the symbol as a heater. So it's basically the same type of symbol that we use for a resistor because heaters are used for uh, electric heat is a resistor. It has high resistance. Other type of things you may find is what we call operation or operator type controls. Controls are devices that switch loads, which is, could be like a motor or a heater or a light bulb, on and off. Matter of fact, a light switch on the wall is a control. It, it will be controlled by a person to physically to turn the switch on and turn it off. These controls can be automatic or manual, but many times in the HVAC fill, these controls are automatic. They will turn on and turn off automatically, such as a room thermostat, which will turn the air conditioning on and off based on the room temperature. To have HVAC and refrigeration systems operating correctly at the correct time and sequence, controls need to be automatically controlled. Therefore, controls need to be able to sense the medium it is controlling and allow current to flow or stop the flow to the load. Controls can control pressure, temperature, humidity, level, speeds, and many other things, but they will make controls to control whatever the medium is. Some terms we need to talk about when we look at controls and switches uh, make or break. Make is actually opening a, a switch which is in open position and to close it. So closing a switch is making the switch or you could say that it is made. Break of a switch is actually opening the switch. So when a switch opens, we consider that breaking the switch. Normally open, we usually draw a uh, switch which has just two bars next to each other to show that it is normally open. So this is a motor starter and ha which has three sets of contacts and in the normally position it is open. When we energize the coil to this contactor it will close it at that point and then it will be drawn different with a diagonal line going through each of the three contacts. In this diagram, the same diagram we saw before here is a normally closed contact where you see the diagonal line going through the contact showing that in this normal position it is closed. So when it activates it will actually open. Time delay type switches. There's many different type of time delay switches. Uh, one type um, switches to turn on um, air conditioning systems um, to delay it operating until uh, the pressures have stabilized or equalized in the system. This keeps from overloading motors. Uh, other type of time delays like for large semi-hermetic compressors will have an oil safety control and is, or sometimes they call it net oil safety controls. It will sense the pressure of the compressor and will allow it to run but if the pressure, the oil pressure inside of the uh, compressor do not go over a certain amount it will shut the system down. So that type of time delay is timing to turn it off instead of timing it to turn it on. 
So switches are devices that start or stop the flow of current through a circuit. Switches can be either manual or automatic operation. Switches have contacts that make or break the flow of current. Switches can have normally open, normally close contacts, or a combination of both. All types of switches are rated by their current capacity of its contacts. The higher the capacity of current, the higher capacity of the load that it can operate through the switch contacts. So there's many different types of switches and one type is the what we call a contactor. A contactor are used to control the operation of loads. The contactor is rated for a load consuming more than 20 amps of current through its contacts such as compressors and larger motors. Most contactors can have more than two poles and these poles are usually normally open. There are three main components to a contactor. The coil, which receives the control voltage. The contacts, which has line voltage going to it and it controls the voltage to the load and the mechanical apparatus which is the linkages and springs and things that um, hold the contacts open and of course when the coil is energized allow it to close. Relays is another type of switch or control. Relays are used to control the operation of loads again Many times it's controlling loads of smaller type of devices and or other type of controls. The contact is rated for a load consuming less than 20 amps. In other words, the, um, the relay is rated for less than 20. Contactors are rated for 20 or more. Most relays have one or more poles to control current flow. There are three main components of a relay very similar to a contactor, the coil, the contacts, and the mechanical apparatus. Thermostats are switches that is controlled automatically by the temperature is sensing. Thermostats can sense the temperature of air, gases, liquids, and other type of mediums. So thermostat contacts can be normally open or normally closed or sometimes thermostats has a combination of both if it's controlling like a heating system and the air conditioning off the same thermostat. Normally open contacts that will close on the increase of temperature of a thermostat is used for cooling systems in operation and normally close that will open on a decrease of temperature of the thermostat is used for heating apparatuses. Humidistat is a type of control that senses the humidity in a room to turn the humidifier on and off. So it works very similar to a thermostat, but it will sense humidity only. And it works uh, by opening and closing the contacts through some type of hypostatic type of material that will expand or contract based on the humidity. There are many different type of uh, disconnects used to uh, control power or disengage power to loads. In this picture is a load center which is controlling multiple uh, devices such as air handlers, pumps, and different type of blower motors or fans and found in uh, buildings such as schools, office buildings and other uh, larger uh, buildings and so basically it's called a motor control center where you can operate the device from a remote location by disengaging the power but all devices need to have some type of disconnect service disconnects are used to isolate the HVC equipment from the power source to be able to work on it 
Disconnects comes in many forms such as indoor or outdoor use, motor control centers, or just a plain on and off switch. Disconnects are used for the safety of the technician. Therefore, all HVAC and refrigeration equipment by code must have a service disconnect switch. A motor starter is another type of switch, but it's very similar to a contactor. A motor starter uh, are used for larger motor driven devices and its purpose is to turn on and turn off the motor control the contacts um, by a coil that is attached to the uh, contactor portion of it but the difference is from a contactor motor starter motor starters are designed to handle the current flow for larger types of motors but also the motor store will have a motor protection portion of it which will uh, sense the current flow through each leg and if the current is high or higher or unsafe through either of the legs it will open up the control circuit to disengage the motor. Limit controls. Limit controls are any type of control that will limit the use of the equipment. For example, heating systems. If it got too hot, you need to disengage it for safety reasons. So it has a certain set point that once it reaches that limit, it will disengage the circuit. So it can be either pressure, temperature, or even position. Uh, for example, if um, a device moved to a certain location and it becomes unsafe, it can trip and limit switch to uh, disengage the operation of the equipment. Factories on uh, uh, large pieces of uh, machinery a lot of times will have limit controls on it to protect the operator from uh, hurting themselves or running into other type of hazards. So to summarize this week's lesson, there are many types of HVAC systems with many ways to control the equipment but understanding how to read electrical diagrams will aid the technician to understand how the equipment operates. Both types of diagrams have a specific purpose. Pictorial drawings will help the HVAC technician to understand where the wires are connected and how the wires are in the system. Schematic drawings will help the HVAC technician to understand how the, to troubleshoot a HVAC system by giving a logical representation of the operation of a HVAC system.